The story about the Samu, the versus Muni boy, it's my first day I went across and watched the school boys playing. The first team I was playing was Samu's team. I didn't even know where versus Muni is, to be honest. I keep asking who's your school, they said, oh, it's in Nagua. And it's very hard for me to pronounce it. And as a kid, it struck my, my, my eye straight away when he walked past me, it's Samu. I was one to watch him, so the moment he catches the ball, he plays, defends, whatever he did, I said, this is my boy. Hello, Vinaka, and welcome to another edition of the Time Sports Show. We've reached uh, the mid of the year, and of course, so many events already over. The Super Rugby competition is over, but there's many more events uh, that are undergoing, that's underway right now, plus many more yet to begin. We have the Rugby World Cup left to be held in France. We have the Pacific Games in the Solomon Islands. Of course, we have the Netball World Cup in South Africa coming up. And there's many more competitions that's already underway in the country. And today on the show, we have uh, the Fiji National Rugby League coach, the Fiji Mbati coach, Vodafone Fiji Mbati coach, Wais Kativarata. Uh, here with us, uh, Wise, welcome to the show. Thank you for taking out your time. And uh, tonight, we'll, uh, today, we will be talking about uh, rugby league and how the sport is progressing. Of course, the next World Cup coming up in uh, 2025. Uh, that'll, that's our next rugby league World Cup. Uh, Why is uh, the Vodafone Top Eight competition and the FNRL Women's uh, Premiership competition that's underway already? Uh, I guess the first round in the Top Eight is uh, already over. We have uh, defending champions Nandela Panthers playing uh, Saru Dragons. That's undefeated in the second round, uh, which uh, resumes at Lawanga Park uh, this Saturday. You, as the Fiji Mbati coach, of course, uh, you do look at the cream of players uh, that uh, have potential to represent uh, the Fiji Mbati later on. How have you seen the competition so far this year? Uh, yeah, Mbula um, Ruit. Uh, thanks to Fiji Times and uh, Time Sports for having me here today uh, to come and talk about rugby league. Um, yeah, I've been watching a few um, of our top eight competition. Yeah, they, um, there's a lot of uh, work to be done and uh, to me personally, Nandera and Saro Dragons, they, there's a reason why they're on top because they've got experienced players running the show for them. So they play a bit of basic football, uh, which other teams tend to miss. Uh, to me personally as a coach, uh, there's a lot of improvement we need to do. Um, at the same time, we need to have a look at our grassroots level. Uh, start from the bottom all the way up. Uh, most of the time, the old Fiji Rugby League, they start from the top, they stay on top. With me coming in now after two months, uh, sort of know we need to work from the bottom all the way up. With the top eight, uh, top eight competition with the women, um, I enjoy watching them. I enjoy watching the women, you know, they do the basic right. Mm. Uh, because most of them haven't been uh, play rugby union a lot. So they learn the fundamental stuff of rugby league, especially the, the knowledge of the game. They pick it up really quickly. Uh, with the boys, there's a lot of potential there, but we need to work hard on a few little things like the majority of the team, they still play rugby in a rugby league game, mm. if you understand where I'm coming from. So that's one thing I'm going to work hard in uh, this year coming, because I already, when I arrive here, it's already much. So I can't go to clubs and change a lot of things they already done in pre-season. So I'm looking forward to pre-season so I can get more to the clubs and help them out, build their, build their confidence, build uh, something for the players, the local players, to believe in themselves. Because mm. in the past, most of the coaches uh, that come before me, they always pick NRL players. So I want to tell them, you know, there's opportunity there for you if you work hard enough. Mm. The top end and the premiership, they're of course the elite competitions. Uh, you've set up academies for the boys and uh, I guess uh, the girls' academies are coming up uh, soon as well. Uh, how important uh, are these secondary schools and these academies? Uh, you know, when you say we have to change this mindset of uh, you know, not playing the rugby union style of rugby league, uh, how important do you think this uh, will help in future? Um, I always said, you know, um, people need to remember this. You know, we, rugby league, bring a lot of discipline. Um, and you have to be patient. Mm -hmm. You got six tackles. You don't have to throw the ball around. And that's one thing, you know, the discipline will come a long way. You know, rugby league will bring a lot of discipline to the kids in Fiji. That's another thing, you know, with the academy and the grassroots, it is very important uh, for rugby league and rugby union. You know, I'm talking on behalf of rugby league, you know, the grassroots is very important. That's why I'm going to high school all over Fiji from Namosi, Naitasi, Riserua. We're going to Kandavu. We're going to Lao on the 18th, on the 11th of July to the 18th. Then we go to Obalao the week after that. So it's important that we build uh, school first. We go to getting everyone, put them in academy, run them through. 
program that we're doing now, you see the result of the Eastern side beat Kerwin, because I spent a week or two with them. And when they beat uh, the school that come, one of the top schools in Queensland, uh, on Rugby League Academy, uh, majority of those kids were the Cowboys, so uh, I'm, I'm happy with what the boys achieved. They beat them by uh, 14 to 10. So it's important we build them up slowly, build them young, so when they come to the next level, they are ready to, they know the knowledge and understand of rugby league. Uh, on the other side with the girls, it's easy. So what I'm trying to do is build up something for them in the uh, end of July. Start training them, teaching them. So when NRL clubs are looking for some girls to add on to their program, we already got some training ready to go. Know the fundamental stuff of rugby league, catch and pass, play the ball, one-on-one uh, -on -one tackle. Those are the stuff that I need to teach them here before they go across. Hmm. Speaking about uh, contracts and this overseas club uh, players getting contracts, we recently had uh, two school students getting contracts in Australia. And these school students, uh, Vashish Muni College and Mahatma Gandhi Memorial School, I guess they were not playing rugby league a year ago. Yep. Rugby league for about six, seven months and they get overseas contracts. There may be, may be many more hundreds of these uh, kids who would not have had an opportunity to play rugby league. And I guess uh, this sport being introduced in schools is important to churn out talents? Yeah, I, I, I put it this way, I, um, I see when I first arrived here, like back in 2011, onwards from there when I would come and pick up Sisa Wanga, Sammy and the boys, like Kikau and them. And I always said to myself when I was playing, after I played, there's a lot of potential in Fiji but untapped. So I'm so happy for Fiji Rugby League uh, and the board for giving me this opportunity to come and work in Fiji for four years. So when I came across, I already a plan has already been built in my mind mm. for 12 years. I know what I'm going to do. So that's why I, as soon as I arrive, I start my work straight away. I don't stop walking, <laughs> working. I keep going. The only time I rest, if I sleep, I'll sleep for four, years, four hours or something like that because I have my mind thinking, what's my next move? So the story about the Samu, the Vasas Muni boy, is my first day I went across and watched the school boys playing. The first team I was playing was Samu's team. I didn't even know where Vasas Muni is, to be honest. I keep asking who's in school. They said, oh, it's in Nabua. And it's very hard for me to pronounce it. And as a kid, it struck my, my, my eye straight away when he walked past me, it's Samu. I was one to watch him. So the moment he catch the ball, he play, defense, whatever he did, I said, this is my boy. So I went up to the family, uh, have a word to his uh, old man. His old man said, oh, the Japanese rugby school is coming in, I um, want to talk to him. Then I explained myself what I do, uh, what can I offer him to help him with the school and everything. And another thing, is, another kid is a kid from um, AG, Assemblies of God, he's still in our system, Lemeki. He's a good kid too, very humble, very, very good kid. Uh, that's, the, that's the two boys that strike me straight away from day one. With the MGM kid, George, it's amazing the story about George because um, he never started a game in his, in his time at MGM. But every time I come and train MGM, he remind me of Sammy Randana. Whatever I ask him, he do it straight away. He listen, he do all the small thing right. And when he come into the academy, after day three, George come from here to there. And that's the sort of kid we're looking for as NRL scouts, NRL recruitment. We only put good kid and hardworking kids. A good kid make my job easy when you go across there, he's always going to be good. Hard working is going to make the coach job because he's always going to turn up on time and do the little thing right. Mm -hmm. So that's a story about those two recruits. So it teach the other kid, you don't have to leave home to go to the other big school. You stay there, you keep working at rugby league will come to you. Great. Uh, speaking of uh, schools rugby, I guess uh, you've started up the academies and uh, you start up anything, that it comes with challenges and I heard a few schools uh, did not allow their kids to take part uh, in the academies and uh, of course they missed out on playing uh, some of the top uh, rugby players in the age group. So how, how are you willing to or how are you planning to counter that in, in the coming years? Oh, uh, you know, we, we, we can't change <laughs> uh, some of the school um, system or some of the way the school teachers do things. To me personally, I um, that's why I want to start the academy in Kandavu. I'm going to Kandavu, it's easy, because the Kandavu uh, province, they got 75 villages, three big schools. 
So if I can start something there for our kids from the um, Kandak Island, well, they got opportunity to like the kids in Suba. So I'm going to Obalau and start something there. Maybe go across to Sabu Sabu so the type of the kids can come across or the Sabu Sabu kids can go across. And one in, again, Bua Madwat. So we can start it. So if we got a team, one or two teams, because now they're willing to come, the NRL clubs, you know, there's 17 clubs. We have to provide for them. That's why we have to set up the academy. You know, the other um, thing, the good thing about rugby league, you know, we got 17 clubs looking at our kids in Fiji. On the other side, the rugby teams, they always want to go, go one for one, the draw. So all those kids, they only fight for one. <laughs> With us, you fight for 17 clubs and you're living overseas. At the same time, you get a permanent residency. If you've done really, really well, you earn a lot of money like every other kid. Mm -hmm. Like the other players. So what I'm doing now is try to set up academy for them. So from the academy system, they can go straight to the clubs. Like the top eight become top 16. So they can go to Nandera. Kandabu got their own team. The Kandabu academy goes to the Kandabu team. They come to Obalau, got the academy. We can build a team in Kandabu. We can build a team in Madhuwata and Bua because we got academy there. The kids from academy, they can play. As a 17 years old, they can play on the top eight. They already play against men. So when they go across to Australia, it's easy for them. They already play against men. By the time they play play against their own age, mm. they're already ready to go. And because we already teach them the fundamental stuff. So that's how I want to grow the game. Because when you look at it, if they play in Lawanga Park, there's not many watching. Can you imagine if there's four games in Kandabu, four games in Obalau, or four games in Sabu Sabu? There'll be a lot of people. So we need to take the game out there. Because from the past, growing up in Nosur as a 17 years old boy, before I go back, we always see the people in the Main Island get the opportunity. Coming back now, the only people got opportunities in Main Island. We tend to forget the people from the outer island. So that's why I'm going there. The reason why I'm going to Lao is try to see how far the islands are. If that's the case, well, I might as well start a team, might as well tell the Fiji Rugby League, we start the board, a Lao boys here so they can play. So the kids from Lao set up academy, they brought them here. It's a different story, get used to the city. If I know myself, the kid from Lao is ready to go or the girl from Lao ready to go. It's easy for them from here to Suva to go across. Great. We'll talk more about Rugby League when we return after the break. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Welcome back to Time Sport uh, with us uh, this evening or today is uh, the Fiji Mbati coach Wais Kati Varata. Uh, Wais, uh, it was great to see our uh, Fijiana girls, former Fijiana girls in the in the Cowboys the women's team that is, uh, that they held their presentation the other night. It was beautiful to see the girls uh, in their outfits. Uh, this is something uh, you talked about earlier in the show about opportunities uh, in Union. I, I'm not comparing here, but in Union there's uh, fewer opportunities for girls. We can say it's just the draw and then uh, when you look overseas there's hardly any teams that uh, it's either super rugby women's that they are the other seven teams but for rugby league there's quite a few opportunities and that was uh, seen when these two girls uh, joined the Cowboys uh, many more opportunities for other women uh, in the sport in the future yeah I um, I always said you know most of the time we forget our women uh, you know growing up in a village women always sit in a back burn cooking uh, doing all the hard works but I, I believe nowadays um, things are changing uh, changing a good reason because women are getting paid to enjoy the uh, enjoy the same environment as men. Uh, Vitalina and the other girls enjoying it. You know, I never forget the day Vitalina and the other girl caught me. You know, they were surprised how much rugby league has offered them in a short time. You know, they couldn't believe <laughs> what been provided for them. They got their own plays, everything they never they dreamed of as a professional footballer. They got it in a space of two days when they arrive. So rugby league is growing. Uh, the women's competition is going to grow bigger. Like you said, you just said it, you know, the competition in Super Rugby is only a few clubs, you know, uh, the, uh, the Fijiana, which they run a good system, and the other team from uh, Australia. With rugby league, what they're trying to push now is having 17 men and 17 women. 
So that's all uh, paid professional, ready to go. So at the moment, there's only about s uh, seven or eight running at the moment. So I'm in contact with a few, with a lot of the clubs, uh, see what we can do. Um, the one thing I want to do, I want to set up the system, like I said earlier, to set up a pathway, uh, academy for them, which is really good. It's important that we build them young from 15, 16, 17. We can go up to 21, 22 with women because they're easy to teach, easy to learn, uh, and they're not being, um, playing more rugby, same as the boys. So some of these boys, yeah, by the time they're playing at 15, 16, some of them got a knee injury, shoulder injury. We didn't notice it until they come across and they get operation. But with the women, they are really good. They're ready to go. And I'm excited. I have, I'm always happy to watch them play. So I want to set up something for them so when they arrive in Australia, they're not far behind on skill-wise, knowledge of the game. Uh, everything is set for them, ready to go. Hmm. You've been around uh, holding clinics, of course, but uh, I've seen lately you've uh, you've attended training sessions of uh, <coughs> rugby union teams. Yep. Uh, you were at the Talibu Rugby Union uh, training lately, and a few other trainings that you've attended. I guess right now what we have seen, what we've seen in the past as well, is players who play rugby league they tend to move to rugby union, or some rugby union players tend to switch to yep. rugby league. Uh, the basics uh, or the, the fundamentals of the game is usually the same apart from a, rule, a few rule changes. I guess this, uh, if we are to grow sport of rugby league in Fiji, we have to uh, walk hand in hand with the rugby union? I think, I think we, we have to. Um, like I said when I got interviewed from day one, I you know, we don't have to look at the name of the game. We need to stop them. One thing we need to see is the people who are playing the game. I went into my first day at Maris and watched a Dins, uh, games happening. That whole day I sit there, I can see there's about 20 of the young kids coming out with neck injury during defence. It's about time we work together. I'm, like I said, I'm happy to teach. I'm happy to go to every school that need rugby league in or whatever. I myself and my coaching staff to come in and just teach young kids the proper tackle technique so they don't injure their neck, their neck, their head cut, their mouth because they keep putting their face, their head, their neck in the wrong place. It is important that we teach them because one day one of these kids gonna break their neck and on a wheelchair will regret this day. Because what I, one thing I, I saw is they, the, the, the movement, the moving up, the, the, the way they're standing, the way they carry themselves. It is important that we teach them from the basic of tackle technique. Working together, it is important because I see it this way. If we build these kids together properly in a system, their running line is good, the tackle technique is good. The only one is going to benefit is our national team. When they go to the Nrua, the Nrua's coaching staff don't have to worry about them. They know how to tackle, they know how to running line, they know how to catch the ball properly. When they go to the flying fiji, even better because they've already been training down here. That's what I'm doing at the moment. I'm teaching the grassroots to understand and the knowledge of the game properly. The catch and pass, the tackle technique, all the little things, the one-on-one, -on -one, your decision making. Build them to become a better person first before they become a better football. That's all I'm doing. Mm. Coach, I know you've been focusing a lot on uh, the secondary schools and the women's, but your ultimate goal is uh, the 2025 Rugby League yes. World Cup. Uh, a lot of experienced players uh, moving away after the last World Cup. Uh, how is how's our pathway looking heading into the 2025 World Cup? Yeah, well, our pathway starts this year. Uh, we had a tournament in Papua New Guinea uh, against Papua New Guinea and um, um, Cook Islands. I've been uh, in touch with our manager and uh, a few of the, our coaching staff from the last World Cup. My goal this year is to make sure we start building now. So we've got to, like you said, you hit the nail there. There's a few senior players moving on. There's a few senior players. This is their last World Cup. I'm going to have to look at 2029. I like to build. That's the way I'm doing things. So my focus this year is just to have a look at a few of the NRL players and few of the fringes from the New South Wales Cup, Queensland Cup. Don't forget the Ron Messi boys. Um, Wes Nagama, Steve Driscoll and Petro, they do a great job there. I know I can't thank them enough for giving young Fijian boys opportunity uh, to go and play in Australia. That's a good competition, so I'm going to look at them too. And maybe have a look at again our structure here, our top eight in Fiji. Have a look at what we can reward a few of these kids here. Like I said, I'm different from the past coaches. I have to install belief in themselves in these kids. If that's one thing these boys have to learn, they have to believe in themselves. Mm. If they believe in themselves, they can do it, we can do it. So this is my building, my stepping stone, building stone from Papua New Guinea, Cook Islands. Then we look at 2024, at least 2025 come, I know what I'm going to pick. 
compared to 2022 when I walk in, when the other senior player pull out, Rambele have to pick whatever he can. I don't want to be in that situation anymore. Mm. I have to walk in in 2022. I remember so and so can do this. So and so is not good at this. He's good at that. So I can put them together with the coaching staff. 2025 come. There's no excuse. We're ready to go. Mm. Coach, finally from our side, uh, I know. Uh, there's a lot of involvement uh, of you in rugby league activities now, secondary schools, academies, Fiji Mbati, the women's. Uh, I'm pretty sure it comes with a lot of challenges, uh, yep. financial factors. There's a lot of factors that would be uh, you'd be facing right now. So maybe you could bring it up, maybe you could share so that you know our, our business houses are looking, our sponsors are looking, uh, listening to this, and they would uh, maybe come up with a solution in the future. Yeah, well, because... Um our biggest challenge for us as a development team, we don't have any sponsors. So whatever we can afford, we do it. Uh, if the rugby league in Fiji is never can't afford it, well, I pay my own way. I have to do it. I pay the staff, tell them we go, we go. It's important, you know, I, I look at it this way, you know, if this is the only time they gave me four years, I have to make a difference. I'm not a sort of bloke who love to sit in the office and make meetings and do this. No, I'm an outside bloke. I have to do it. My goal never changed. If I can put two Fijian boys and two Fijian girls per club, that's 34. The more of them goes, the better for them and their family. So with the sponsorship, well, we always look. Uh, as we know, they are, our sponsorship, Vodafone, has done a great job in the past. But right now, they only look after the Fijian body, the the school boys competition and the Vodafone Cup top eight. Development, nothing. So we we just go, we play by the day it comes. So we have nothing there. I'll just, I'll just get our media office, Sakalera, and I say, Sarawaki, we jump in a car or we book our own way and we go. It's important, you know, work never stops. We're gonna keep going, whether money's there or not, we're still going. That's the way I look at things. All right, we just hope there's a kind heart out there, a rugby league lover, who may, be, who may step in and change things for Wise and his team. We're doing a great job. Coach, thank you for your time. Thank you once again for making it. You're doing a great job and uh, we wish you and your team all the best in uh, all the development works that you're doing. And of course, to the pathway towards the 2025 uh, Rugby League World Cup. That's it for us tonight. Till we meet again, Isamode.